Good morning, good evening, everyone. Today we have uh, our student and now a mentor, Dr. Gunjan Agarwal, and uh, she matched into pediatrics. So we wanted to sit down with her, understand her challenges, what she overcame, how she overcame these challenges for a successful match. So welcome, uh, Gunjan. Thank you, Pawan. So let's start with a brief background about yourself, you know, your profile, your graduation, et cetera, before we dig into the challenges. Sure. Um, thank you for doing this. I think this is a great platform to inspire other students as well. Um, my, uh, I'll start a little bit about my journey. I am an old graduate. I graduated from India in 2010. And um, shortly after I took an, I tried giving USMLE step one and I failed. So that's my first challenge that happened. Step one. Step one, yes, in 2010. Um, and I also know it was mostly lack of preparation and lack of adequate guidance that time. Everything was online and you had to find your own mentors. Not many people were giving USMLE that time from my college. So it was a challenge. But I had already decided that I wanted to pursue pediatrics at that time. So I didn't let the failure in step one really affect me. And I decided to pursue a home country residency. Um, but circumstances change. And after my residency, I moved to the US. Uh, once I moved, before jumping into the USMLE journey all over again, I decided to pursue a master's in public health. Uh, that just seemed like a very natural next step, just because pediatrics is also very community heavy and very public health heavy. So it really helped shape my understanding of US public health systems, helped me um, understand how to talk to people, how to um, communicate, which is very important. Um, you also know this, that communication is the key in any medical system, but especially US medical system. So I gained a lot of um, research skills that time. I gained communication skills. Um, and uh, unfortunately, again, life happened. Um, I took a break from uh, work and I took a break from public health uh, to start my family and raise my family. Uh, but again, after three years, I decided to pursue USMLE again. Um, that's when I started preparing for step one. Um, the next challenge that hit me was the pandemic. As soon as I had started preparing for step one, the pandemic happened and everything seemed difficult, um, but I continued with my uh, preparation. Although it instead of six months, it took me almost a year to prepare and give step one again. Uh, but I finally made it in January 2021, I would say yes. Um, I would like to stop here and just address that how I overcame the failure of step one with my uh, attempt. Uh, with my second attempt and that was mainly due to um, consistency in preparation. Um, I gave a couple of hours every day. I tried to not memorize and I tried to understand everything especially since I was starting my um, medical studies again uh, after like almost six years and I um, was patient. I tried to do my weaker subjects every day and um, some things that I was, you know, I was good at like biostats or in general pediatrics was something that I, uh, you know, reinforced by way of question banks. Um, it took me a year. It took me longer than I had decided. Other external factors came in. Um, but what really helped me was that there was nothing to lose. I was anyway not doing anything. It just helped me understand that it's an exam and I can take it and let's see where it goes. Um, right after my step one, I was, I was fortunate enough to uh, land a research job mm -hmm. at, um, at a top three university program. Um, and that really helped me. Having a good mentor in the program who supported my journey in USMLE and who uh, helped me develop skills that would eventually um, help me to match. Again, communication skills, getting my point across, um, uh, highlighting my positives, um, and uh, rightfully explaining what I lack. So um, having a mentor really helped me in my uh, entire match process. 
apart from the research experience that I gained and um, how I learned to manage a team, all that aside. Um, I have been fortunate enough to have matched into a good program. And um, I uh, attribute that to, um, you know, having a well-rounded application. I have said that earlier as well, that um, I applied only to pediatrics since that was my passion and that is my passion. And um, I applied with a well-rounded application. What that means is not just having a little bit of USC and not just having a little bit of research, not having some clinical experience. I applied with a, with a confidence in my application that this is my best foot forward. I am passionate and that showed in my application throughout, whether it was my CV, whether it was my personal statement, whether it was my interview preparation. Once I... Um, uh, completed my application. I enrolled in the Sarthi uh, Silver Plan, I think. That was mainly interview prep and uh, the Telegram group, which is extremely helpful. Um, I consistently read all the answers, even if that answer, that discussion was not particularly applicable to me. But I would read any question that was asked by another applicant and um, answered by one of the one of your experienced panelists. And that really helped shape my own answers. Um, and uh, once I was interviewing and I took the mock interviews right before I went in for my actual interviews, I think that changed my entire perspective. Again, that reinstilled confidence in me when the panelists and experienced, um, you know, uh, uh, residents and physicians would tell me that, hey, you know, you're doing good. You just need to pay attention to this. You just need to feel more confident. You need to bring out your positive. Again, the same thing. They were reiterating the same things, but hearing that from someone who's already been through this journey was very helpful. Um, I think one of the turning points was the interview prep in itself. Uh, one of your panels was so wonderful that she literally boiled all my answers down to just a few points that you have to keep these things in your mind. Whenever you're answering a question, you just have to bring out those qualities of yours. And that really, really helped me. Um, I have, I'm again, I'm really thankful for the Sarthi team as well. Um, and I see that right now, even on the Telegram group, you, everybody is um, trying to help each other. Uh, and yeah, I'm just happy. So, uh... You know, based on what you said, a couple of things uh, mm -hmm. jump out. One is consistency. Even if you had a failure, you know, that consistency, you shouldn't give up. The second is probably the U.S. Masters helped you overcome. Uh, the third is, as you pointed out, passion and commitment. You know, yes. what you re really are interested in, passionate about, that automatically will reflect in your application and interactions. And then there is the communication, you know, the mm -hmm. confidence to communicate, put your point across, understand others' perspective. So I think those are the three or four key skills. Um, and then, of course, your research also helped you overcome some mm -hmm. of the uh, hurdles that you faced, whether it was old YOG or, uh, you know, the attempt. Mm -hmm. Now... The other missing piece is the U.S. clinical experience. So how did you go about the USE and how was that helpful? So um, I had done one elective way back in 2010 before giving my step one. That was still on my resume. Uh, that was an elective done in uh, New York State, uh, New York City. And um, although I did not have any letter of recommendations from that point, I still kept that on my resume. Secondly, um, once I joined my research, um, it was extremely difficult for me, since it was a full-time job, it was extremely difficult for me to go and find external observerships. Um, at the same time, I couldn't leave my family back in another area and go out. Um, so my mentor helped me in that way. She helped, let me observe some of her clinic visits. Um, and uh, I... It was on a consistent level. Again, um, I know a lot of people go out for um, one month of elective and they get three letter of recommendations from that. Um, personally, especially for pediatrics, I don't, I would not 
uh, talk about internal medicine. But in pediatrics, I think they really look for commitment to peds. They really want to see that you're not using pediatrics as a backup specialty. So having one month of USC and having three LORs from that was not something that I wanted. So instead of doing that, I shadowed my mentor over a couple of weeks. So um, whether it was uh, in the clinic, whether it was um, her interacting with a group of patients in an educational uh, setup, uh, whether it was the nurses who interacted with some patients. So I tried to keep it that way. And I tried to really understand how the US clinical system works uh, through my research as well. Um, so that was one thing. In terms of letter of recommendations, I did not have letter of recommendations apart from my uh, US mentor. That was just one. But since I had a home country residency, I had mentors back home who were head of department and head of um, like a, a subspecialty who wrote letters for me. Again, in those letters, they reiterated that although I have a gap in my uh, education, educa not education, but in my practice, in my clinical practice, um, that she is capable and she uh, would be a good addition to your team. I think having, having um, communicated that aspect to my LOR writers really helped me. I don't know if, I don't know the other side of the story. I don't know if the program director really saw that, but I honestly feel that writing that honestly in the LOR from like, they, they told me that they, you know, wrote that. So um, having um, that communicated to the program director, to the associate program director who are looking at my application really helped that. And again, my uh, CV was entirely PEED specific. It was um, experience in pediatrics. It was, again, my uh, master's of public health. The MPH was also uh, slightly peds oriented. My research was pediatric. I just want to reiterate my research was not general pediatrics or, um, um, you know, peds subspecialty. It was actually pediatric urology. So although it was a surgical specialty, it was still pediatrics. Mm -hmm. I... I kept it that way. Like I, I really liked that part that I was able to do that, make a difference in, you know, children's lives that way, whether it was gen peds or whether it was a surgical speciality. So I feel that a lot of students end up focusing a lot, like having a very um, narrow outlook and they only want gen peds, only want, uh, you know, he monk, or they only want that. It's how you frame your story and it's how you phrase where you're coming from and where, where you want to go. So I think um, students need to really understand that, that um, PDs are people too. They see right through your application. Uh -huh. They see why you're doing something just for the sake of it or are you really passionate about that? So having reiterated that even during the interviews, again, as I said, the mentor, the Sarthi panelist who gave me those five or 10 points that I need to bring that about. One of them was this, that I have been dedicated to pediatrics throughout my life, whether it was gen peds, whether it was my own child, whether it was pediatric urology. I don't think there was any interview in which my daughter's topic did not come up because they are humans too. They were always interested in knowing more about you that how you're doing and what have you been doing. And it was not a bad thing. It, I have I have a daughter. Like, um, so you know, it's not a bad thing. Right. Well, this was this was excellent. I, I think very very uh, eye opening for a lot of applicants who have some misconceptions. Uh, now, what would be your top tips for people either in their USMLE journey or? Uh, you know, trying to apply this season or the next. I know we discussed quite a mm -hmm. bit, but if you were to pick three or four top things that uh, they focus on. I think consistency. Um, whatever you're doing, whether you're doing research, don't just do it for the sake of it. Be involved, be interested. Doesn't have to be, it, the research doesn't have to always result in a publication. Every good researcher knows that 
publications don't happen with just two months of research or just one month of research. You need to be involved. You need to be involved long term. Um, even when it's you know, like a clinical experience that they are rotating in some hospital, they need to take some more initiative. They need to be interested. Um, they need to have their own goals ready that when an attending asks you that, hey, what do you want to do later? They should not be like, well, I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about that. They should have a clear set of goals that they can talk about. People really appreciate that when you have clarity in your thought. Um, another thing I would say is um, approaching the entire application and the applic match cycle in a very positive way. If you have somebody who is, I'm talking to all the applicants here, that if you have someone who is not a positive reinforcement in your application cycle, let them go for some time and you can catch them, catch up with them again. But you need to be confident in your application because that shows in your interviews as well. If you are not sure about some aspect of your application, try not to include it. If you don't like that story in your application, don't include it. Because it is going to be at some point or the other, depending on the number of interviews as well, every aspect of your application is going to be brought up. Whether it's the gap, whether it's the attempts, whether it's your transcripts, whether it's your um, LORs, everything would, will be brought up at some point or the other. So if you're not happy about your application, it's going to show in your um, interviews as well. Um, another thing I would say is, um, um, I would just say that it's a long process. Don't lose hope. Mm -hmm. And um, some people told me time and again that everybody matches. So yeah, everybody does. If it's not in this cycle, it's in the next. If it's not in this, it's in the next. As long as you keep up, you know, you yes. don't give up. Yeah. Yes. You can't just sit on the same application again and again. You have, you don't, again, at the same time, you don't have to do things for your application. You just have to continue doing the things you're doing and improve on the negative aspects. But yes, don't lose hope. Well, thank you very much, uh, Gunjan. This was very, very interesting and motivating to get insights into your journey and uh, hopefully helping other and so thank you I and good so. luck for your residency thank you so much